Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today we're going to be playing with one of these Nintendo N64 Space Modulators, RF modulators, and we are going to be building something to allow us to try my telly out, my little wee telly. So I've got the pin out, I'm basing it on the pin out of this, which is the Super Nintendo SCART cable. So have a little study of that while I open up this bad boy. And basically, it looks like a very similar connector, so I'm hoping it's the same. And actually, I'm looking in the end, you can just about see some pins in the end. And I, I say that and I'm just like looking over for an actual pen. I can't believe. I've really run out of pens by the way. If anyone wants to donate some pens, please do. It looks like these four, oh, hold them up to the light, these four are connected and then there's a gap and then these two are connected. Okay, so that's uh, an interesting thing. So we're going to see what, what's going on with that. I'm wondering if this is a ground on six and then the one immediately opposite. One, two, three, four. And the pin five is also a ground. But that, you know, let's have a look, see. So the idea is basically, I think I did, I thought I opened one of these up, not this one, um, is that I should be able to take a composite output device with sound as well actually, I just realised that, sound as well, that's a good benefit and be able to get that to work on an old telly. So there we go, so that's that bit there, that's pretty much the whole thing and you can see there are some sort of tuning components in here, that's probably because the levels that come out of the Super Nintendo be at a certain, certain level. Um, so I can confirm looking at the end this way of course that audio right and audio left are actually joined so it's combining the audio so it's basically a mono it's combining the audio five volts and composite video are separate yes and then there's a gap which is here and then there's ground and yes pin five and six at ground so it's it's very similar it's almost the same um, in fact, it is just pretty much the same. Don't worry, that's pretty much the same, but just the audios are joined together. So you need five volts to power this circuit. So my options are, actually, um, I can probably just solder on some bits and bobs. So I have this. We could probably just test it alone with video right now, because that's an easy one. And then we can try hooking up the audio in a bit. So just get the soldering iron on. And I'm just going to have a quick, oh god, look, that's a big old thick cable, but it is possible for me to get the power hooked on with it. Let's do that. It's a nice thick cable so you can, you know, see the colours, but don't use this thicker cable. Oh, hang on. Sorry, my head's in a spin today. There's so, some obvious options here for me. I found this big bundle of um, wire, and I think it's designed for hooking up your breadboard projects together but I use it in this way it sort of seems a bit wasteful a lot of people tell me it's a bit wasteful but come on you buy them in a massive bag uh, from you know the Far East for next to nothing outsource outsource your wastefulness so I'm just going to tin these up I believe that was the ground and I believe that was the audio so these are what we're focusing on. So let's just have a little look-see again. So the outer ones are the audio, so we're going to ignore that for the minute. And then we've got the composite video and 5 volts are these two, and then the ground is on the far end. So we're going to put the ground on because that's the absolute easiest. So I'll zoom in for you in case you're working along at home and you're trying to make the same one. This should be your ground. He said with ma massive confidence, this should be your ground. Now, I'm pretty sure it is. There we go. So we'll try to work out then which is the five volts. The five volts will be this bottom one. So I'm guessing this pin here is the five volts. So I'm going to do a little tack. I mean, this isn't the final soldering, of course. This is just for experimenting. Um, 
because what we can do of course is remove that connector altogether and actually salt oh that would be neat solder these straight through the PCB properly trim the legs you know you, you make a proper little nice adapter from that so that means this other one will be the composite video in and I seem to have spare ground so I've got I've got I'll put another ground here so we've got a, basically a video ground and a, and a power ground and that's just a pure convenience for hooking this up um, but yeah you'll probably do the same I'll tell you why you're going to do the same because you might want to solder an actual connector on it and I think I'll just go ahead and do that just because it will sort of save that one bit of messing around and these are these filthy things which just don't want to solder. In fact, a op good opportunity, of course, to try out my uh, brushes that were so kindly sent to me by Power Crazy. Um, those are no good. We're going to need more. We're going to need the steel. Let's see if that actually makes a difference. I'm just giving that a good old scrub. I don't know, you know, I think the only thing to get the tarnish of this older connector is probably a Dremel. No, actually, tell a lie. It does look good, it does look good. Let's try it. Just gonna poke that through. Which side did I do? That side. It's that uh, it's that shiny I couldn't tell which side it was that I'd done. Stay. And yeah, come on. No, it's just not. It, it's almost like these connectors. There we go. It did it eventually. I, I think they're galved. I think that's probably. I keep thinking it's because it's like they're dirty or old. But I think it's definitely because there's just sort of got a galve coating on it. You're really struggling to sort of solder onto galve. Right. Let me get this one in here. And you're noticing I'm not sort of bending these. I'm not sort of bending them just because. I'm giving myself the option to undoing this and not having them totally ruined. Oh, just, I might end up bending this one though, because look, it's just annoying me now. Right, stay in. Nope. Sod it. Let's do it. That one's definitely permanently sacrificed to this project. Okay, so. That being said, I think we're actually pretty much done. So we've got our connector. We've got this sort of Space Invaders game that's going to be acting as my AV source. And I'll just plug the video component in alone, which is like that. I've got a bench power supply here, which I'm going to set carefully before I start to precisely 5 volts. 5 volts. Okay, so we're hooked up to that. Now, to go from the teller to that is going to be tricky right now. I don't have a solution. So I think I'm going to make a little antenna to act as a little transmittery antenna. And it, it's not the exact, it's definitely not the right uh, wavelength and everything, but that should be enough for us to cross swords and get a signal if the signal exists. So we're going to turn on the telly. It's just sort of checking, is it actually on? Is there a brightness? There is a brightness, and that's kind of maximum brightness. Bit of volume there. Let's turn off the light. There we go. And now the power supply is going on. 370 milliamps. I can see this, the, the screen is actually um, already scanning. I forgot to turn on the uh, Space Invaders game, but it's on now. Come on. I believe in you. Oh, it went quiet then. Right, I am back. I've put new batteries in these things. That was my main concern. It was something to do with power. I've got the thing on. I'm going to put my game on. And let's turn on the screens and see what we can do. Remember, it was channel 35 when we last played, so that's going to go that way. This one should be coming up to 35 any moment now. That one's on it. And there you go. Both of them are on 35. Make sure the volume is down on one and up on the other. It's quite good, isn't it?
This screen's great, actually. This is not so happy right now, but it could be. There we go. It could be because the antenna is actually nearer this one's wire. But look, there you go. That's both of them working ish. It's not touch it too much. I think with a little bit of fettling, though, you get a pretty good job. You've got your little space invaders. Actually, I don't like space invaders. I don't rate it. I kind of like Phoenix better. But it seems quite playable. The screen on this is actually pretty good. Much better than this one. So it's obviously got a few more pixels. I wonder what version of Phoenix this thing is emulating because it it looks better than the uh, ones I remember. Even the I don't think the arcade had a moving star field like that. Come on. Oh, is this one going a bit tonto? Oops. Looks all right, I think. So yeah, sound, video, everything, the full work. Oh, <laughs> knocked it off. Um, yeah, sound, video, the full works there. I mean, that's pretty, pretty pleasing all in all. It's, it's really. Oh look, there you go. There's your Radica. It's weird seeing it in stereo. Um, turn the volume down. But yeah, really quite neat. I think that. It, you know, being able to actually just do that is, is going to be crazy uh, useful in so many scenarios. And I'll give you an example, for example. I've got a uh, an old car and, uh, for example, it has maybe TV fitted in it. Remember the old blue, the head, you know, headset things that go on the back? Passengers can look at it as actually TV. Nothing works with analog TV. So there you go. Just dismantle one of these, shove it in the boot put it onto a, a set-top box, a digi box, and there you go, digital telly. You could solve all sorts of problems like that. The picture quality is, is pretty damn good, and I think, really, if you just sort of hardwire the antenna in, I think you're going to get pretty good uh, innings with it. But if you just make yourself a little antenna, use an old uh, radio antenna just like that, and then you can just sort of set it whatever seems to be the optimum sort of height for transmission but it, it works really well i mean you can see i'm moving these around and they've still got the picture on them they're quite that one's going a bit fuzzy but look i put the antenna out here it's all right there you go try it get yourself your n64 um adapters and uh just get adapting really and then start running your old tellies remember this will work with big tellies too you like even your big black and white ones with the big turny knob your old RCA ones if you're in the US. Lots of options there for what? 50 pence. As ever, thanks for watching.